Hi, and welcome to episode 39 of Booming Your Bottom Line, titled, Stop Your Zero ROI Hours, Stick to Your Highest and Best Value. I'm Aaron Murphy, and with me as always every week is my co-host, Mark Hager. Good morning, Mark. Hey, Aaron. How you doing? I'm awesome. This is a fantastic subject today, and I'm really excited to get into it, but quickly first, I want to let our listeners know about the training we did last week. It was a huge success. We don't want anyone who's interested to miss out so we've got a replay up for you to watch even if you didn't register for the training now if you're a modeler or in the construction or design industry this is truly a must-see just go to byblive.com slash class 5 enter your email address and you'll get instant access to this free training this is the type of stuff that others are charging thousands of dollars for but we're choosing to give this away to you so take advantage of it before we take it offline in a few days. Again, that's byblive.com slash class5. Yeah, that was a fantastic training. It was chock full of valuable info and actionable items that can help you change your income level significantly. And those that stick around to the end of that webinar receive some amazing insights and opportunities. So even if you did start with us live on the webinar, but you had to leave early, Go back to the replay and finish watching. You're not going to regret that, I'm sure. So today we want to talk a little bit in depth about the idea of being a leader in your organization and what that looks like as you begin to grow your company. There are points along the way where we all feel like we are CEO and janitor, per se, right? We're wearing all hats. It's stressful. It makes for very long days. And it's tough to see the light at the end of that tunnel. That place where you could finally stop burning the candle at both ends, working 12 to 14 hours a day, and losing sleep worrying about tomorrow. Right, Aaron, and we've all been there. I know you and I both have in the past. and It's tough starting and running a business, no question about it. But I do need to say kudos to those that are listening today and have done it. I mean, congratulations for having the courage, the guts, and you know, the strength to consider something that's outside of the box of, you know, regular employee life. You're one of the few, one of the great ones, and someone that can really make a difference in the life of, of, of you and your family and community. It is no small feat, and Aaron and I certainly applaud you for that. Now, that said, there does come a point in time, you know, that Aaron was referring to, the place where you reach when you get busy enough for projects and clients and leans and pursuing new business that you just can't seem to get it all done anymore. And you start feeling like you're behind the eight ball every day. And you have to leave you know, the office worrying about what you didn't get done, you know, what's going to be stacked up against you when you come in again tomorrow. And that's even after you know, sometimes 12 plus hour days. I mean, am I right? You feel that, don't you? Well, we know and we've been there. So the question becomes, how do I stop the madness? Right. Yeah, that's true, Mark. I mean, I remember being 24 years old and working as a drafter, an architecture firm, small firm, but a very well-known niche firm in Seattle. I recall starting to think during my six years with the company, how cool it was, how nice it would be to be Lance, the owner of the firm. Yeah. I mean, holy cow, he spent his days playing golf and going out to lunch with millionaires, <laughs> owners of auto dealerships, distribution centers, major companies, and CEOs sketching ideas on napkins with a beer at a five-star restaurant, mm -hmm. right? And then those sketches later became permanent and built projects, buildings designed by his 30-person office. In my mind, in my mid-20s, wow, what a life. What I only learned in reflecting on that experience and those feelings that I had 15 years later as my own company was beginning to grow, I realized the only reason I had a job at that company 15 years ago was the work the owner was doing. Yep. He was not spending time on things that didn't make money. He was, as the owner, at his highest and best use, his highest value to the company he owned. His job was to get work. Right. It was a real epiphany for me. Yeah, and that's a great point. You know, it, it can be really hard to see the, you know, the 50,000 foot view that's a common misnomer with the quote unquote technician per se, in your case, the drafts person. You know, I say technician in reference to a book that I know we've both read more than once, The E Myth, you know, The Myth of the Entrepreneur. And I highly recommend that to every listener here today. You know, get a copy of that book. 
and make it the very next one you read. It's that important. You see, the theory is that typically it's the technician, just like Aaron was, you know, the drafter, who sees the boss and their, their great lifestyle or their position in general at some company and starts thinking to themselves, you know, I could do X, Y, or Z better, you know, or they have some motivation to strike out on their own. You know, in in our particular area, maybe they're a caregiver. They see someone they care about that's in a position that they need help. So they want to strike out on their own so they can make a difference. Yeah. And, you know, they go hang their own sh shingle and give it a go. And wow, you know, are they in for some major surprises? Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. And caregiver is a great example because many many of people the people we've talked to in the last 10 years that have started their own business it's had to do with being in a situation personally where they couldn't find the answers they needed mm -hmm. right? and then they saw a hole in the market so very true there are many small business owners out there today that were that technician right that person like me the drafter or the employee and I'm actually in conversations right now with our local college around teaching that point with an attorney, an accountant, a contractor, the list goes on for any small business, but let's just pick the remodeler because that's who we, the industry we've been speaking to recently. Just because you know how to hang drywall or install cabinetry and a sink or run a drill driver does not mean you know inherently how to run a business. Am I right? That's true. I mean, many of our own clients are those that have reached this exact point of recognition, okay? They came to us at BYBL and said, here's what I don't know. And I do know I need help and guidance and accountability to get where I want to go. That's actually our perfect client here at Booming Your Bottom Line. And by the way, if that's you, we can help. But more on that later. Yeah, very good point. You know, for today, though, you know, we want to be sure that what we cover is this idea is that you will reach the point in your business where you're trying to do too many things, wearing too many hats. And, you know, it really just gets to the point where it's starting to kill you, kill your energy and kill your your ability to get anything done. Um, but it's also can affect your sleep, your focus, you know, and more importantly, in the big picture, in a lack of free time, family time and balance in your life. You know, it gets overwhelming. And, you know, we know and trust us, there's some long hours in the beginning. And you do need to be smart about, you know, your overhead and keeping it as low as possible during the startup phase. And, and startup, you know, that can mean months or years, just depending on what you're doing and the market you're in. But what we want you to seriously consider today, to think long and hard about is, is when is that point where you need to see that point of inflection and in growth in the growth curve where you should look at how you start to diverge from CEO and janitor and what I mean is this when is your job as leader visionary the highest and best value use of your time in your own business again to reference the ebook the e-myth book when the technician starts a company they will only learn along the way that they need to fulfill two other very important roles leader slash visionary and then also manager if you are now doing all three things it's time to initiate some changes in your organization being all of those things is not sustainable for the long term yeah absolutely mark it can't last you'll burn out or you'll fall asleep at the wheel mm -hmm. or you'll end up divorced okay trust us we've seen it all and we don't want that for you so what you need to think about is this, is now, or is it coming soon, the point in my business where I need to delegate? I know that I personally reached a point about year three in my business where I started to plan for this. I started with a small part-time admin person. They did, I'll use the word menial, and I don't mean to discount their value. I couldn't do this without them, okay? That's for sure. But I, I gave them the tasks that I shouldn't be doing running the office, things like going to the post office, mm -hmm. right? Opening the mail, filing my receipts. I was staying at work till 8 p.m. or coming in at 6 a.m. to get this stuff done. So that was killing the balance in my life, like Mark said. Okay, that kind of stuff. QuickBooks, collecting payments, going to the bank, right? As they earn my trust, I in, I've also asked them since then to take my car in for an oil change or go get the party supplies for my kid's birthday party, yeah. right? So at some level, you know, 
that person in my office has become a personal assistant. But the goal for me is once you have enough work to support that, you should be as a phase one growth component, always at your desk and billable. Okay, anything else you can delegate that in my case keeps me making $125 an hour when I'm being an architect is worth paying someone $15 an hour to take it off my plate. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Every hour I'm doing those things, I'm not making $125 an hour. I'm making zero, right? So when you have the billable work on the books, this is the way you should be doing this. Your job, phase one growth, is making your clients happy, right? Because now you're talking about referrals and you're talking about your um, you know, your brand, right? And your mm -hmm. brand is your baby, okay? So that becomes the highest and best value to your company. Also in that stay, step one next phase of growth, kind of toddler to adolescence in the business sense, I also started using 1099 contract drafters, testing them out and seeing if we were a good fit. And boy, I'm glad I started that earlier than later. I went through about six of them, two weeks, 12 weeks at a time until I found one I could trust and release some of my requirements over to him, okay? But at the end of that, I now have someone on staff only as the work required of them requires they're there, mm -hmm. and I pay that person $25 an hour, but I bill them at 90. So every hour he works, I make $75. I'm also paying someone $15 an hour to keep me at my desk making 125. See where this is going? can really grow from there, right, Mark? Absolutely, and that's that's a really great example. You know, those are some real numbers, folks. And I I know when I was just starting out, that's exactly the dream you're shooting for. I mean, think about it. Aaron can go on vacation with his family, and because he has work coming in, and, you know, he's got someone to cover for him and make progress on his projects during his vacation and to the tune of $75 an hour. You know, that equates to $150,000 a year when he's not at work. And that's powerful stuff right there. And just as important as the income it can generate is the fact that, you know, as the owner, just like Aaron does now, you can stay at your highest and best value. You know, Aaron spends probably 40% of his week in business development these days. He is now that guy going to lunch with owners and CEOs. His highest value to his company is sales and relationships. All right. He's he is the on he's the one going to the chamber lunch, the rotary meeting, sitting on boards and committees, and the phone is ringing off the hook because he's known. And that is what the admin cannot do. That is what the, you know, 1099 or full-time drafter, you know, or labor or carpenter or interior designer, etc. in your own business, they can't do that. Get the work. That's your job as the CEO, the leader and the visionary. So this is about your own point of inflection, your personal growth curve, and recognizing the place in your company when you are overwhelmed and you need help, and how you can structure it to be greatly leveraged for your business and your growth. And one of the greatest opportunities for growth and income beyond your wildest dreams is investing in yourself. You know, all of the greats that you know by name have had business coaches and mentors all along the way, and still do to this day. Bill Gates, Michael Jordan, Richard Branson, it doesn't matter who you thought of, they all had mentors, business and personal coaches, and, and much of the role of those they had in their own lives was about the accountability. That's what BYBL can, can be for you. When you block out time, just like you would to cook food if you were on a diet or to get to the gym if you had a personal trainer. But here, the ROI of investing in yourself can be so massive. The cost of the investment in a business setting becomes insignificant. You know, Aaron and I have both spent well over $10,000 each in personal trainings and coaching in our own business and personal lives to get to the point where we are today. And we see this as a chance to pay it forward through education to the public in the sectors and industries that we serve. So if your status quo day in and day out isn't getting you the income and ROI that you were dreaming of when you went into business for yourself, then it's time to consider a change, a shift in your thinking, your actions, and your accountability. Every one that succeeds at the highest level has invested in themselves. And we're inviting you to look in the mirror and see if that's the point that you are at. Right. You know, look, if you're not happy with your income and your current return on the investment or lack thereof of what you're making in yourself, 
if you're ready to say yes to growing your company, yes to really stepping up, having a massive impact in your family's financial future, if you want to be able to give more, give back to your community, if you could really sincerely say yes to us, I'm ready to the idea of earning thousands of dollars more every month for the next two or three decades, then let's do that. Let's get you there together. Go to byblive.com forward slash ready and apply to work with us. Fill that form out completely. There's no obligation to do that. We'll review it. And if it seems like we're a good fit, we'll get back to you within 24 hours and we'll set up a strategy phone call with you. Absolutely. If you're ready, we'll be glad to hear from you. We'll be on the phone about an hour talking about your business and be able to give you some great insight and advice of stuff that you can do right now to help you in your business. We appreciate everybody listening today. If you would, please share this episode on LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter. It helps us reach even more owners like you that are doing good work in their communities helping older customers. And until next time, be well, be bold, and boom your bottom line. Have a great week, everybody.